insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 66. This is another one of our Q&A series. This one is on emotions, dreams, and life events. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my caring and cheerful co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? Pretty good. So how was your week this week? Anything exciting happen? Um... I went with mommy to pick up groceries. Wow, that's that's exciting. Look, it's exciting because I actually got out of the house for <laughs> once, okay? Fair enough. Uh, we have some beautiful weather this weekend, it looks like. Wonderful, really hot. Uh, I was actually warm enough to put the air on today. Um, New Jersey is slowly starting to reopen, it looks like, according to the governor. Uh, so hopefully we'll have a chance to get out of the house for a little bit. If nothing else, maybe this weekend we can just go for a drive and get out of the house for a bit. So we'll see. All righty. So this week we have another Q&A series. Uh, we're going to be talking about emotions, dreams, and life events. Uh, any questions, statements, snide remarks, bad jokes before we start? Nah, I'm good. You're good? Yep. All right, shall we just get right into the questions? Why not? All right, let's do it. So the first set of questions that we're going to be asking are questions about emotions, various emotions and and feelings and so forth. Wonderful. Uh, And this will actually be the topic that we piggyback on next week for our our podcast for next week. Awesome. I was wondering which one of the three you were going to pick. That's right. So let's get started, and uh, I'll just start asking the questions and getting your responses. All righty. So the first one we have is, what is the first thing that made you laugh today? Well, I guess it would have to take place in the early morning when I was working on my math work, and um, we had had our um, front our side door open it was right by where i was sitting and we have like a screen door where it's like a um window like you have the main door and then we have the screen door on both our front and um side doors and dorothy ended up um um she normally like stands and um there's a little ledge where she can put her paws and look out and watch the birds and i think that was the first thing that made me sort of like chuckle a little bit just because i just liked how she was now, was, was she just, singing at the birds? She, ha- she has a tendency of singing at the birds. Well, not, um, she wasn't um, singing, um, but I ended up um, picking her up and um, helping her see. And then later on, I opened up the window, and um, we actually saw a squirrel while I was brushing her. Okay, very cool. So, yeah, a little entertainment for her. Nice. So, the next question is, what makes you thrilled and excited? Um... I guess, like, any, like, fun or cool surprises that, like, you so happen to, like, mention to me about, like, when you call me downstairs and saying, like, we're going someplace or you have a special thing for me or something like that. For some reason, I always just like those, like, good surprises. Clearly not, like, I'm not talking about the bad surprises. I'm not saying I like all surprises in general. I just like, like, the um, good ones that, like, um... Um, show that you um, really do care about me, and I just really get excited over them. Okay, well, thank you for the surprise disclaimer there. Um, (laughs) What is the best part of your day, typically? Uh, Typically, it's when I am done with schoolwork, because it means that I can go relax and ease any stress that I had over the day and just 
overall just relieve anything, any problems I had during the day. Okay, good answer. Do you ever feel lonely or left out? Well, not now, but I remember in sixth grade, it was my, it was honestly my regular at school. Um, thing is, I never had any friends that were in my class, and I never had a lot of kids who were my age, who were my friends, and it was just really lonely in my class. Although I was in the advanced math then, I um, I didn't really feel as though I belonged in the class, not because I wasn't smart enough. Well, part of it might have been that, but it was also because none of the other kids really talked to me. I never really talked to them. I was basically just the person who wasn't very social. And under those circumstances, what would you typically do? Um, well, <sighs> the best thing I would normally do would be either to talk to it about to talk to it about my friends who I did see, because another main problem happened. I used to sit with my friend Mariah, and we ate lunch together. But, due to apparently when I was absent during a week, apparently a bunch of boys made it so that we only had to sit with our class, and it stayed that way for the rest of the year, and that didn't help. Aren't those boys annoying like that? Yeah. They are the absolute worst. Like, even on the last few days of school, I couldn't even sit with Mariah because of them. Right. No, I get it. I get it. Oh, so see, and this is the motion. So we're dealing with emotions here. See, it's fitting right into the whole episode. Great. <laughs> uh, what scares you the most? Okay, so I mentioned I have a bunch of fears before, and I definitely think, like... I narrowed her down. Spiders freak me out, but ne not necessarily terrify me. Heights I've gotten a slightly more used to. It's the dark right now that terrifies me. Okay. I don't know. It's just the feeling that something's there and I can't see them. And I know you set backed it up before when I said this, like saying, well, how do you know if someone's not there when the lights are on? And for some reason that never bothered me not even after you said it I, that still doesn't bother me i'm just terrified of the dark at this point okay well that's something i think everybody goes through at some stage in their life yeah it's that fear of of the unknown the uncertainty involved yeah okay uh what would you say your biggest worry in life is at the moment well i guess the fact that i'm getting older and the fact that i'll probably be making really big life decisions that will have that will, that will inevitably decide whether I have a good or bad future. Okay, well, that was much deeper than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I thought it was going to be like, you know, I want to get out and see my friends or something like that. Um, I mean, I see my friends because we can FaceTime now and text each other. That wasn't right now one of my biggest worries. Um, I mean, sure, like now there's a bunch to worry about, but right now I'm just worried about my future at this point. Okay, well, that's very mature of you, I have to say. Uh, so let me ask you this. What helps you feel better when you're upset or stressed out? Um, normally it's going and talking to you or mommy about it because just talking about it and getting, like, knowing that you guys are there to listen and hear me out and that you'll um, hopefully try and help me the best way you can helps out. Also talking to any of my friends about it, um, they always normally understand and they always try to help me out. And just taking a break from whatever made me upset or stressed um, also helps. Okay, good answer. Now this next question, I think we kind of touched on with the lonely question, but it's a little different. So this question is, do you ever feel sad? And if you do, what do you do to feel comforted? Well... I normally feel sad when um, either someone I know or one of my friends or family is hurt or someone hurt them or um, just something bad happened that greatly affected my happiness. Um, that normally makes me sad and the most and most of the times with my friends or family, um, making them feel comforted, listen to if they have any problems and just Helping them makes me feel comforted for that. As for any um, situations like if I feel sad and something impacted my happiness, it would just be to just 
I guess, take a break from it and just try and just walk it off, just like lie in bed and think it over a bit. Okay. Well, I think that's a nice sentiment you have of, of wanting to help other people like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's take a step away from the kind of, you know, dark negative emotions of sadness and loneliness for a minute. And let's focus a little bit on the positive here. So um, what are three things that you are grateful for today or this week? Well, I'm glad that you and Mommy still have your jobs and you're still able to make enough money um, so that we can have, we can provide ourselves with food and everything we need. And yeah, food and all the resources we need to survive is definitely another thing I'm grateful for. And I'm also grateful I still have a roof over my head because I know a lot of um, a lot of kids and families aren't that lucky. Okay, well, they are some very uh, grounded and mature things to be happy for. Uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of proud of, of your answer there. <clears throat> um, so that's enough of the positive stuff. Let's get back <laughs> to the negative here. <clears throat> right. Um, so what hurts your feelings typically? Well, I guess... Whenever people look down on me or don't believe in me, um, I'm not normally surrounded by those people, but there are people that seem to deliberately try to hurt my feelings. I remember back in gym class, there was um, a girl. It wasn't the one girl who annoyed me. She just annoyed me. She never did anything bad to me. Okay. Um, this one girl, for some reason, always, like, I don't know, <sighs> Like, she gave a comment to me every time I did, like, she always, like, gave me a sarcastic comment um, whenever I did, like, the littlest things. Like, when one time I was trying to, um, we were playing knockout, and I was trying to give the girls back the ball. She kept saying, like, get out of the way, we can't see. And I'm, like, like thinking in my mind, like, okay, what's her problem? And then... Right. And that wasn't all. Like, any time I, any time she interacted with me, like, the first thing she said was that sarcastic comment trying to bring me down. And most of the time it did, because I didn't like, I didn't like the fact that she just, she basically hated everything I did, in a way. Mm. Makes me wonder, when people act like that, what, what's their motivation? Like, like, clearly you're not doing anything that affects them. So what is it about you that they're jealous of, you know, that's what I want to know. And they try to bring you down so that generally that's what they're doing is they're, they're trying to bring you down to lift themselves up or in a, in, instead of lifting themselves up. Yeah. And I really don't understand what her point was for being sarcastic about the littlest things I did that didn't even affect anything with her. Yeah. That's unfortunate. And, and sadly, you're going to find that there's a lot of people like that that you have to deal with in the world. But we don't want to dwell on that right now. We have more negative things to talk about. <laughs> Great. Uh, so as of right now, what is the most difficult thing in your life that you're dealing with? Um, I guess coping with the fact that we're under a pandemic and that it is a and that many people are getting sick and dying and the fact that um I that our entire lives have basically changed because of it and just I mean I'm not as greatly affected as some people are but it still goes on my mind like how are other people feeling and um just how big of an impact this is on the world yeah, it's serious stuff so, um, moving right along, mm -hmm. again, sort of sticking with the negatives. Great. Um, do you care what other people think about you? Yes and no. You're going to have to clarify right. that. I know. So I care that my friends, like my younger friends, either look up to me or care about me. And I care that my friend, the friends my age care about me and, um, and that they can trust me. And I don't want to be like a person that people hate. And like, once again, with that one girl, whenever she just seems to want to put me down, I don't understand why. 
and I don't understand why she just does that to me. I don't know what I did to her. I never tried to do anything to her. I never want to be a bad person. So, and I know you say, like, you shouldn't care about what other people think about you. I think I care a little too much. <laughs> well, and when I say that, I don't mean you shouldn't care in that, you know, what you think of yourself and what your loved ones and your close friends think of you is what matters. There are people that you will encounter throughout your life, uh, a lot of people that you will encounter in your school years, that their opinions should not matter that much because they're really only going to play a very small role in your life. And I know it's, it's difficult to kind of wrap your head around the concept now because as a 13-year-old, Everything that's happening now is significant to you. It's perceived, the perception is that everything is significant. And with age and with time, you'll look back and realize that the time you spend in school is really a small sliver of your overall time in your life that you're, you're going to have to deal with. And you'll find that the people that you interact with now when you're 20 years older than you are now, it's not going to matter. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to wrap your head around that at this age now. Where, you know, the vast majority of the people that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis now aren't going to be there in 10 years or 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, so getting yourself worked up over what their opinion is right now, you know, it's, it's living in the moment. So just keep that in mind. So now we get to the interesting question. Oh, great. Do you have any dark secrets? Um. I need dramatic music for that. <laughs> um. With you guys, no. You guys pretty much know everything about me at this point. Um. And the fact that I really don't talk to people a lot and I have some trust issues, I don't really tell people a lot of stuff. Like. I actually play a game called Call of Duty with you. Um, we used to do it on a daily basis, and my nickname was... <laughs> Rambo. Rambo, yeah. And I think um, we called you Stabby McStab Pants or yeah, something like so that. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> because you just like stabbing people with a knife. Um, and not a lot of people know about that. I think you and Mommy are the only people who actually know. I've never actually told it to anyone else. I just have a bunch of little hobbies that most people don't actually know about. Okay. I'm not sure how dark they are, but we'll go with that. They're sure. not dark. So I'm going to, I have two questions left in this category and then we'll take a break, but I'm going to rearrange the questions. Alrighty. So I can save the positive one for last. Okay. What is the worst thing about being a teenager? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Let uh, me go down my list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So first up, emotional changes. That's going to be given... Um, mood swings are sucky, like, I hate going through them. Basically, like, you're happy at one moment, and then you realize you're losing at a game, the internet goes down, something sucky happens, you get in an emotional rage for no apparent reason, and you act like an idiot. So, yeah, emotions, that's the main problem. Physical change, that's another one. <laughs> Because physical change also comes with the emotional change, and physical change can hurt really bad. Okay. So that's also a bad thing. Um, let's see. What else do we got? I don't think the intention was to make this multiple choice. This was, you know, pick the worst thing. Mental. That's the most thing. Okay. Yeah. That's, Fair enough. I can go down a whole list of mental stuff that I hate okay. about being a teenager. So the last question in this category is what is the best thing about being a teenager? Okay, so... I was going to go with one option, but then I realized that it only applied to a certain amount, to certain teens and not the others. So I'm just going to go for a more general answer for pretty much all teens, unless you're not, um, I don't know. Human? No. Um, unless you're not responsible, because... Um, getting older means you have more responsibilities and you have more independence, um, like how I get to cook meals for you guys, um, 
and how I'm able to be slightly more independent and take care of myself a little more. Um, and I know with some teens it will not work because they have not matured at all and they still act like children, so... Not naming any names. I'm not naming... I don't even know many, that many teens who actually have that. Okay. I'm pretty sure there are some out there that actually go to my school, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Well, I think that was a very well thought out reasoned answer thank you that was all we had for the emotional segment we'll uh, take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk about sleep habits and dreams great for over seven years the second sith empire has been the premier community guild in the online game star wars the old republic with hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. All right, so questions about sleep habits and dreams. Mm. And we'll start off with some softball questions here. Alrighty. Are you more likely to stay up late or get up early? Both. Both. <laughs> so you don't like to sleep at all, basically. Uh, well, I've gotten um, better with sleeping slightly earlier, but not so much with getting up later. Okay. I prefer to get up early for some reason. Okay, that's fine. So when you do go to bed, do you do anything to help you fall asleep? Do you read, listen to music, watch TV? Like I'll I'll read for a bit and then I'll then tend to listen to some relaxing music. Do you do anything like that to help you fall asleep? Yeah, I normally have um something playing on TV for background noise while I read um I recently have been reading my comics uh so far, so um, reading does um, help me fall asleep. I normally read my uh, my SpongeBob comic books that I have, um, and I also have like small other books that I haven't read in a while that I've been rereading. So. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yep. Now, do you when you do go to sleep and you wake up in the morning, do you typically feel rested when you wake up in the morning, or do you feel like you could go back to sleep for a few more hours? Depends on the time I actually wake up. If I wake up. Any time af any time before six thirty, then I feel like I could fall asleep. If I wake up around six or seven, then I feel like it's time for me to get up. Okay, so your body just sort of naturally knows, hey, I got to get moving at this point in time. This is when the day starts. Yeah. Okay, good. Now, do you always get up at the same time on days you don't have to get up? Like, if it's not a school day, do you sleep late on? Saturday and Sunday. Uh, yeah, because I know I don't have to force myself to get up because, uh, like I said before, I don't like having to wake. I actually don't normally want to wake up unless it's supposed to be a school day so I can get my work done earlier. Um, but when it comes to Saturdays and Sundays, I'm just like out like by eight. Okay. Like, I wake up by eight. At least. That works. Now, do you typically find it easy? Or difficult to fall asleep? Are you struggling to fall asleep? Well, I used to be struggling to fall asleep. Surprisingly, during, like, um, a little before and now during um, the quarantine, I actually have found it slightly easier to fall asleep. Okay, good. Is that because you're changing your habits or anything? I don't know. I mean, like, beforehand, my habits were normal and I was able to get a little better sleep. Um, now I seem to be able to fall asleep pretty easy, so... You know, it might have to do with your schedule now, too, because you're not on this, you know, get up, go to school at a certain time, come home at a certain time, have dinner at a certain time, you know. 
your schedule just might be a little bit more flexible now. Maybe. So let's talk a little bit about dreams. Okay. So I guess the first question is, do you dream? Um... And I say dream as in when you fall asleep, do you dream? Not do you dream of becoming an astronaut or something? Um, sometimes, yes. Not necessarily always dreams. Okay. And do you usually remember what your dreams are? Yes, actually. Like, I don't have dreams normally. Like, I'll, like, fall asleep one night. Like, I actually have dreams years apart from each other or just a few months apart. I really don't know. I don't know the cycle. It's just like, I do remember certain dreams that I have, most of the dreams I have, actually. And I remember certain aspects. Not necessarily all of them are dreams, actually. Most of them are actually nightmares. And we'll get into that in a minute. Okay. I did want to offer some commentary from my perspective on this because I found I used to dream a lot more when I was younger. And as I got older, I seem to dream less and less. And like the only time I find that I dream now is if I'm just like mentally or physically exhausted when I go to bed, Mm. Um, like down in Disney. Okay. That's a great example. You know, by the time we get done a full day in the parks, I don't have an ounce of energy left. And when I fall asleep, that's usually when I find I dream. So I don't dream very often myself. Mm. Um, but when I do dream, they tend to be very vivid and very memorable dreams. Mm. But I always seem to wake up before anything interesting happens in the dreams. So I don't know if that has anything to do with age or, you know, maturity of the brain as you get older or what. But I figured I'd throw that out there. Uh, what is the weirdest dream you've ever had? Okay, this is actually an interesting story. Uh, this actually happened, well, it had to have, it had to have happened when either Despicable Me was in theaters, I had seen it, or I'd just seen the advertisements, because it included Minions. I know that. So, um, for some reason, we were back in, like, we had, we were, like, in our house, and for some reason, we were on, our house was, like, on weird stilts and it was like slightly raised up off the ground and then there was just one windy dirt path um and there were no like real houses nearby and there was like a forest archway i remember walking through that archway and for some reason when i was inside you and mommy for some reason were minions i don't know why and you were just speaking gibberish and i felt like i had to get out of there as fast as i could because that was weird But it gets weirder. So I went down that same dirt path I mentioned before. And then there was this one small little house where there was an opening in the trees. And it looked like a pretty normal house and someone invited me inside. And then I just remember that inside there were just blaring colors of blue, pink, red and green, yellow and yellow lights. And there were just a bunch of weird creatures like... I think there was one vampire kind of character, but he wasn't actually a vampire. Uh, A bunch of other creatures that I don't really remember, and it was just... Like, they were having an entire party, destroying stuff, and they were even weirder than you guys, and I felt like I wanted to get back home, and for some reason they wouldn't let me escape. And at some point, by the end of the dreams, I did men... Um... I actually stayed awake during the entire time, and I actually did end up, um walking out and um i was able to get out ran back home and then you guys had turned back to normal and then we had a whole little family bonding time and then i woke up (laughs) okay well that definitely qualifies as a weird dream i will i will give you credit for that yeah so in keeping weird dreams in mind do you ever try to find meaning in your dreams my mother used to do this you know i would have a dream or somebody would have a dream And they would mention it to my mother and my mother swore that she could interpret dreams or she would try to find meaning in dreams when, you know, sometimes a dream is just a dream. Um, I should have had the song queued up for that. Um, yeah. So do you find meaning in dreams at all? Well, not my dreams, not at all. Like they are, 
honestly, any of my dreams or nightmares have the weirdest concepts. But some ha some of my nightmares have relied on either things based off my reality or things based off my main fear. All right. Well, we'll get to that in a little bit. We're not going to talk nightmares just yet. Okay. Have you ever taken... And this isn't a question I've written down, but I'm just curious. Have you ever taken the contents of a dream and used it constructively for a story or something like that? Not really, because the concepts are either weird or either too weird or too terrifying for me. Okay, fair enough. So have you ever had a dream that has come fully or partially true in real life? Um, mm. given the nature of the dreams where you described, I certainly hope not, but go ahead. Yeah, none of them really came true. They just had like realistic aspects, like the weird dream I had. Um, it had like you, mommy, and the house that was surprisingly the same, but just on stilts. Um, and my one nightmare, um, I was actually in Central at that point and in the playground, and the nightmare took place there. None of the other aspects were really real. It was just the uh, um, scenery, I guess. I just find most of my dreams take place in normal scenery. Like when I used to be in my old room, one of my night well, one of my nightmares actually took place in my room. Don't want to get into too much detail just yet. All right. Well, you keep dragging us back to the whole nightmare thing here. So let's talk about nightmares. So let me ask you a question about them first. You seem to have nightmares. So do you have any recurring nightmares that you have over and over? Well, not actually. I don't actually have the same nightmare over and over because I don't actually have my nightmares. Like, my nightmares can be, like, years apart, like I said before. But I have noticed at least three of them have a recurring theme. And those three I'm talking about is my intent is my fear of spiders. Most of them happened when I was younger. One actually happened a few months ago. Okay. So, so is it just elements that you're afraid of that show up in these dreams that make the nightmares? Or are you interacting with these things that are scary? Um, um, it's actually a combination of both. They are aspects that terrify me. Like the one dream I had in, I had in, the one nightmare I had of the one in my room was the fear that Doyen, our gray cat, um, was going to perish. Okay. And, yeah, I was afraid of that. Oh, I see. Interesting. But, yeah, I remember, I know three of my dreams were just based on my fear of spiders. Okay. So let me ask you this. Do you think that there is something in particular that triggers these nightmares? Is there an event? Is there a something at school and the reason i ask is when i was your age eh, probably a little younger um they used to have dances at the community hall in the town that i grew up in and i was kind of young to be going to them but I, like my mom volunteered and she worked like the concession stand or something and as a result i would go down with her once a month to attend these dances and it was loud and and you know raucous and people are dancing and there was large crowds and i found that every night that i came home from one of those dances i always had some kind of nightmare mm. so i stopped going to the dances and i stopped having nightmares so is there anything that you seem to be doing uh activity wise before you have these nightmares or is it just random um i do remember one time that was actually sort of recent a few months ago I remember that I, um, you had actually been watching Endgame, and um, I came down to watch a little scene, and then I went back upstairs. And that very same night, for some reason, I had a nightmare to where apparently we were in the universe of the Avengers, which didn't seem like a nightmare, until I realized you were going to be the one to snap, and you would eventually, and you would actually die from it. Uh. And the weird thing was, you didn't actually die, but when you snapped, you surprisingly turned into a baby. I don't know what happened. Interesting. And then me and Mommy basically had to take care of you for the rest of our lives. I'm sure there's probably something to read into that. I don't know. I don't know. It was just, I noticed that I had seen the one scene from Endgame, and then for some reason I had this nightmare the same, like, the night after I saw it. 
based on that. So, so was there anything else that you wanted to discuss about nightmares? Um, did you want to discuss what they were? Anything like that? Sure. I'll just throw out the three main nightmares that I had on spiders. Okay. Um, two were actually mainly centered on the fear. One was a, was also centered on the fear, but also had a weird aspect to it. I don't know why, but it was weird. Okay. So, I remember the first one I had was one back when I was in Central, when this took place in Central. And for some reason, before I had the nightmare, I just had this thought. Like, I was, inten- I was like, terrified of spiders back then. And I just had this feeling like... You're every- not particularly fond of them now, you know. I know, but I- back then, they were basically the devil. <laughs> now, I can just be freaked out at them, but they're not my internal nightmares anymore. But... Back in Central, I was way more terrified of them, and um, and for some reason, I just had this thought that everyone there would just turn into giant man-eating spiders and would devour me, and during that nightmare, it was like... But you're not a man. You'd be safe. Don't go into that. So, I was just in the one area where we would like play there wasn't like a playground or anything but there were like basketball hoops and stuff basketball hoops on the walls and i just saw like the pe- like there was no people around me but then like the doors like came like opened and i just saw everyone i like i noticed like aspects of the people like their hair or any hats they were wearing um from the people in Central, and they just had turned into giant spiders and were coming towards me. At that point, I was terrified, and I had actually climbed a basketball net to get away from them, and they basically had just swarmed the entire ground. If they were spiders, wouldn't they be able to just climb up there and get I know. I didn't think into that aspect. They didn't climb it. Okay. Moving along, and... And like most nightmares, people, like, leave during, like, the very, um... During um, the very beginning, like, during, like, the most dramatic scene. And that the most dramatic scene was when the basketball hoop broke off. And I was about to basically fall into them and they were going to devour me. But before that happened, I woke up. Wow. Well, thankfully you woke up. Yeah. Um, well, that's a truly terrifying uh, nightmare there. Yeah. The next one, though, I should have woken up sooner. So I did not do experience it. The ending. Okay. So, for some reason, it took place. I started walking through a maze, and it was like bush, and it was like little bush, like, you know, those green bushes of mazes. And, like, I know that I knew that I was good at the maze, and I was actually getting out. But, um, and then I actually saw some foreshadowing, um, in the maze. Like, the closer I got to the exit, I started to see more and more cobwebs on the bushes. So that's a hint that something bad is going to happen with spiders. So yeah. Um this happened around the time that my uh, the first nightmare happened but a few months later. So I was when I got to the entrance there was like this really nice little house and for some reason I uh chose to stay there for a little bit because for some reason I don't I didn't know how to get out even though I knew the exact way to get to the exit. So, I was just hanging in the house for a little bit. Sadly, the happy moments didn't last very long. And for some reason, I wanted to go... There was a hammock out there, and I wanted to go to the hammock. And it turns out it actually wasn't a hammock. It was a giant spider web with a giant white spider with white... With, no, red eyes. And, like, black things on the back of its legs. And it was humongous. And I didn't wake up at the right time. It lunged at me and literally bit me, and I died. And the bad thing about it was that you and Mommy were actually in the maze as well, and you caught up with me, and you just saw my dead body. And you screamed, and that's when I woke up. So I probably should have woken up sooner. Wow. Okay, well, I think that's enough for me right now. I I think we're going to take another quick break here, and uh, we'll come back and we'll talk about Hopefully, happy memories and life events. Yep. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. 
our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. All righty. So let's fix our one audio here. Yeah, I broke that. I should have done that. There we go. Turn the monitor off. We don't need to reverb. Ah. Okay, so uh, in this segment, we're going to talk about some memories and some life events. Yeah. Have a little bit of fun with this one. Yay. So tell me, what is uh, one of your earliest memories? Okay, so one of my earliest memories was actually when we were back in the apartment. Um, and for some reason, I remembered that um, me and mommy were actually in the shower and she was taking, and she was, and we were taking a bath together. Um, I think that was the same day that I had, that we might have moved to the new house, I think, or that we were choosing the new house. Cause, um, the next memory I had was when, like, um, we had went by this really huge white house with, with this, like, brick wall and... It was, like, really huge and looked like a castle to me, especially since I was, like, three years old at the time. So, yeah, those are my earliest mem memories. Interesting. Interesting. Um, where did you go on your most recent vacation? Like, I need to ask that. Disney. <clears throat> yeah, we, I, there's very few times I have gone on vacation anywhere other than Disney. I know I've been to, oh, Ohio. It was Ohio, Yes, right? it's pronounced Ohio. Okay, good. So I remember I went to Ohio. I've also been to California. And So what did you do on this last trip to Disney that you had never done before? We went to Galaxy's Edge. Besides that? Um, we... It involved a lot of water. Um, I, oh yeah, I had my Verge Beach trip, and I was 13, so yeah, I don't go to the beach Which often. is, you know, that's pretty sad considering we live in New Jersey and we're 45 minutes from the beach. Yeah, we never actually went on the beach in our bathing suits and did anything there. Right, we've gone out and we've collected shells, Yeah, but, but never really anything else. Nope. Uh, what is your biggest regret in life so far um i guess the fact that during sixth grade i was very most i had emotional issues to where i would lash out at people that i didn't want to lash out at and they were for stupid reasons it was mainly like my younger friends which i really regret doing um this was before the whole podcast and um i was just really emotionally unstable at that point i guess um i was going through puberty at that point um i was also dealing with of course the loneliness right. aspect and a lot of stuff went wrong in my life there so yeah that was my biggest regret okay fair enough uh what do you think is your greatest achievement so far okay going back to sixth grade <laughs> as much as that year sucked um I um, actually had received a bunch of awards at our um, moving on ceremony, um, being one of only, I think, three kids that actually got all A's during their years at Good Intent, which That's was correct. a huge accomplishment for me. And a surprise one, which was the best science average of my class, which I was not actually expecting. Okay. So Very I'm a good. science nerd. Awesome. You are a science nerd. Nice. 
Uh, have you ever written poetry, a story, or painted a picture? Yes, I actually did all three of those. Poetry, um, it was only for school, and for some reason, um, surprisingly, I was actually able to make poetry. I just don't like the fact of having the rhyme. We did a whole poetry lesson and a whole centers week on it. Well, not so all poetry we, rhymes, you know. I know. There are other poems. There um, are really bad poets who can't rhyme. Uh, daddy. <laughs> um, as, as for a story, yes, I have made um, a story. I actually just um, made a myth for school today. I've also been working on another story that um, we actually had an excerpt of for the talents one. So you're a bit of an overachiever, aren't you? Yeah, and I've also painted a picture of Dorian. Um which was actually my first time actually painting a picture. Which we actually uh, showcased on uh, your Tribute to Dorian podcast a few weeks back. Yep. Nice. What is the most adventurous thing you've ever done in your life? Hmm. This one I'm not so sure of. I mean, I've done cool stuff. It's just... I don't fully remember if I've ever been completely adventurous. Um, well, see, and I think your hobby of roller coasters is far more um, adventurous than I am. Yeah, I had act the like one of my biggest roller coaster accomplishments. Well, two of them actually was one re -go um going on Space Mountain again, conquering my fear of it because I'd gotten lost on it. We've talked about that before, and also. Going on the rock and roller coaster, which was the only ride in Disney that actually went upside down. So it was my first upside down roller coaster. Nice. That's pretty adventurous. I don't think you'd catch me doing something like that. Nope. So what is the most embarrassing incident that has ever happened to you? Um, well, this wasn't in front of a bunch of people. It was just in front of you and mommy. And it mainly affected mommy more. You know, we always have that running gag during like... Hanukkah when like we light the candles and after we sing the song it's like okay blow them out. I remember at a very young age, maybe about five or six years old, I actually blew out the candles. <laughs> it was really embarrassing and <laughs> mommy was rightfully upset at me for it. <laughs> I don't even know if she remembers it, <laughs> but I do. So what is the most dangerous thing you think you've ever done? Um... I guess the most dangerous thing I've ever done was anything that, um, hmm. <sighs> you don't really do dangerous stuff, do you? Uh, not really. The only dangerous things I can think of was when Would I... somebody tell the dogs to quiet down? We're trying to do a podcast here. <laughs> well, the only dangerous things I could think of was when we were at the one, um, we were at the beach the one time and I'd climbed on those rocks which was kind of dangerous oh, and it was slippery. yeah. That was kind of dangerous. In a way. Um, You're such a rebel. I'm not that big of a rebel, Daddy. So what is the weirdest or craziest thing you've ever done? Um, I guess I'd probably go to the weirdest because I've never... I've done crazy things but not crazy enough that it's the craziest thing I've ever done. The weirdest thing I've ever done, um, I'd say, I'd have to say what we were like, when I was like on top of Dorothy that one time when I was mugging her, and then the only way for her to get out from underneath me was to come out, not from the front, from the back. Right, she and from, squirted out. Yeah, and from Mommy's point of view, it basically looked like I was birthing a cat. <laughs> it was funny and weird at the same time, so I'm going to say that's one of the weirdest things I've ever done. So what is the best thing that ever happened to you? Um... Uh, the best thing that ever happened to me. That is the question. Yeah. Repeating it does not qualify as an answer. I, I'm trying to think, okay? I've had a lot of good stuff happen in my life. Okay, pick one. Pick the first one that comes to mind. Being born. <sighs> I don't, well actually no, that wasn't actually the best thing that happened to me. 
it actually was kind of torturous then. I'll have to think of another one. Um, I guess it would probably be, um... Was it meeting a friend? Was it a family event? Was it a holiday? Um, I guess it would have to be the time I met Lindsay. Um, she... Um, we've had very fun moments together, and she's helped me through some difficult times. Um, so I remember that I actually met her on a playground during summer before we inevitably met each other at school, which was surprising because I had seen her on the playground. I was going in the fourth grade, she was going in the second, and apparently she was also in aftercare. So we got closer as friends, and we've had some really funny moments together. Nice. Good answer. What is a personal tra tragedy that you've overcome, and how did the experience change you? Quick question. What is a personal tragedy? A death in the family, um, a disaster, something like that. I guess it'd have to be the death of Fluffer. Okay. Um, that impacted me at a very young age, about the age of seven. And I really loved Fluffer at the time. I had known her basically my entire life at that point. And I was really close to her. We have an entire video on how I like base and how she was such a good sport because I mugged her as well. Um, and her death really impacted a lot that happened to do with me. I remember grieving over her a lot and it took me a while to sort of calm down. Even sometimes mentioning with her, like in some of our other podcasts when we mention her, I can't help but cry sometimes. Yeah, it was, it was definitely emotional for you. Yeah. So the last question that we have uh, for today's podcast is, do you live by a life motto? In a way, yes. I've always known that, like, all sexualities, race, I live by all sexualities, races, and religion. Religions are sort supposed to be considered equal unless people have a really bad attitude or bad personality or just overall a bad person then you can lower your respect for them but if it's just if you just hate them based on their um sexuality race or religion it's really wrong because you don't actually know them that is a really long motto i was like you know do on to others as you'd have them do on to you or, you know, something. We need to work on the marketing aspect of this motto of yours and get it, get it cut down. I like the motto, though. Yeah, like I consider everyone equal except those people who are just people who want to bring others down, don't have a good personality, or just really mean. Well, we'll work on the motto part of that. Okay, cool. We're going to take a quick break, come back, and we'll give you your closing remarks and shout-outs if you have any. Go for your closing remarks. Okay, so I'm going to do a sort of small closing remark for each of the topics that we discussed. First one, emotions. Um, mainly out there for the teens. I know having to deal with emotions and the time we are in right now, it's difficult, but just know there are people out there that will um, try to help you out and that there are people out there that care about you and... You will overcome this, like I mostly have. Very um, good. As for sleep habits and dreams, get a good sleep. Um, that's the main thing I have there. If you do have any troubling um, dreams or nightmares or thoughts that you had during your sleep, um, feel free to try and mention it to a parent, and they might be able to help ease any um, insecurity that you have um, there. Um, as for memories and life events, I really don't really, I really don't know how to phrase a closing remark for that, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, sounds good. Well, I think that was all we had today. Um, I think it was uh, some really good answers you had in there. Some of them were some pretty tough questions. Mm -hmm. um, I would invite everyone, if you're interested in more of uh, what we do on the podcast, you can catch us on Twitch five days a week at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can catch all of our video podcasts on youtube.com slash insights into things. Uh, you can touch us, uh, reach out to us on Facebook at facebook.com slash 
uh, Insights Into Things podcast or on Twitter at Insights underscore Things. Or you can email us directly at comments at insightsintothings.com or catch all of our material on the web at www.insightsintothings.com. And, you, and don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights and Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights in the Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. And that is all we had. Alrighty, bye everyone. Another one of the books. We're out.